We try to make it over to Quivira Wildlife Refuge at least three or four times a year. And each time they have the whooping crane sign up, I get a little excited. Even though I know our chances are not good to see one because you should be there very early. The first birds we saw were some pelicans with some waterfowl behind them at the Little Salt Marsh. Pelicans are really pretty large birds when compared to some of the other birds in the area. These are American pelicans and they're mostly white with black wingtips that you can see when they're in flight. Here's a wider look at them so you can see just how many there are. Whenever we're driving from the Little Salt Marsh to the Big Salt Marsh, I try to keep an eye out for other wildlife. And I noticed a couple of ears sticking up from the tall grass under this tree. Even though it was in early November, it was a warm, sunny day in the low 70s. And some of the snakes in the area were taking advantage of the sunshine to warm up a bit. I picked this little snake up just to show you how small it was. There are several species of garter snakes in this area. And I'm not sure, but I think this is a checkered garter snake. As you can see, this one's very small and harmless. Along with the harmless snakes, there are also rattlesnakes in the area, so keep that in mind if you're ever visiting during nice weather. Great blue herons don't migrate, so they can be seen here any time of the year. As we were approaching the western side of the Great Salt Marsh, thousands of snow geese decided to take flight and it was quite a sight to see. I'm not sure how many thousands of geese there were in this one single flock, but there were a lot. Even though there were a lot of birds that flew, there were still a lot of birds that didn't. Just a short ways down the road, I saw this adult tundra swan with a couple of juveniles. As you can see, there are other birds in the background also. We were a long ways away from these birds, so I scanned them real slow because I knew I'd want to take a better look once I got this on the computer. And as you can see, there are sandhill cranes in the background, lots of geese, various ducks, and a few swans. And then I think down towards the end, there are some pelicans. Quivira is a very interesting place because each trip out there is a little bit different depending on what time of the year you go. Sometimes there aren't as many birds as other times, but it seems like there's always some wildlife to be seen. Just for the fun of it, if you're a birder, 
leave a comment and tell us how many species of birds you see in this clip. I was a little surprised myself by the number of species that I saw in this group. While I'm thinking about it, if you've ever been to Quivera, I'd like to hear about that too. It's just a great place for anyone who loves nature, and it's kind of like a birder's paradise certain times of the year. It's in the Central Flyway Migratory Route, and an amazing number of birds come through this area every year. We also came over when there were a lot of herons and egrets and ibis coming through the area. And that was a lot of fun to see that too. Keep your eyes open. There's a predator that shows up later in this clip. See if you can spot it. Here's a hint on the predator. It has four legs. If you didn't see it yet, it was a coyote and you just missed it. With thousands of birds in the area, it's a perfect place for anything that eats birds, like this juvenile bald eagle. We pulled over and spent a couple of minutes watching this single American Avocet feed. There were quite a few of these in the area, but most of them were pretty far from the road. This one was a little closer. Most of the ducks were pretty far from the road too, except for this small group of mostly mallards. And they were doing what ducks do just hanging out. I think these ducks are northern shovelers. I'm not 100% sure on that, so you birders out there feel free to correct me. Or if you saw anything that I failed to mention, feel free to leave a comment and tell us what you saw. Sometimes if a snake's not warmed up yet, they can be pretty docile, like this one here was. If they're really warm, they'll act pretty much like they do in the summertime and take off on you. But this one was not wanting to get off that nice warm road. So it just kind of didn't react much when I picked it up. And as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the first one I picked up. I just let you see the size of it and then put it down so it could crawl off. It's 
Since there were quite a few cars in the area, there were actually some snakes that got ran over that very day, like this one. We left the big salt marsh and headed back to the little salt marsh to see if we missed anything over there. And on the way I spotted this deer. She was feeding in these trees. And she was well aware that we were watching. She looks just a little irritated. But she went back to feeding anyway. She decided to leave and that's when we noticed that there were two does instead of just one. And they got the heck out of there. And that's where the expression high tail in it came from, I think. After leaving the big salt marsh, we went back to the little salt marsh to see what else we could find and noticed this spot with a lot of turtles in one little area. You can see all their heads sticking up. I peeked over this culvert and turtles scattered everywhere. I slowed it down just a little bit so we could see just how many there were. I'm guessing there were close to a dozen before I scared them off. I usually see them waiting, but avocets can swim too. Some of the geese that flew earlier were starting to return. This is a sight that I've seen many times, but no matter how many times I see it, I never get tired of it. I feel pretty blessed to live within driving range of a place like this. While we were there, we saw a car from California and a car from South Dakota, and a car from Missouri. Whooping cranes are one of the rarest birds in the world, so I can understand why people would drive so far. We never did see a whooping crane, but we still had a pretty great day. There were a lot of little heads sticking up in this area too, but these are mostly frogs. I thought there was a bird standing in the water down at the end of this slough, but as I zoomed in, I could finally see that it was just two turtles on a stick that was in the water. This snake wasn't there the first time we drove through, so I knew it had been freshly run over. On our way out, we noticed that there were a lot of birds that moved into the little salt marsh, so we stopped to take a look. When you add these birds to all of the birds that were on the big salt marsh, there was a heck of a lot of birds there that day. I'm not sure how many thousands, but it was an incredible number to see in person. If you're just now finding this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.